1985 Kitty Clover Potato Chips, Ryan Sandberg, Herald Arrival of a New Hobby Favorite. Man, if someone had told you entering into 1984 season that the Cubs second baseman Ryan Sandberg would have been part of baseball elite within a calendar year, you would have said they were smoking the Wrigley Field Ivy. Unless maybe you were a wait until next year optimist, or a super scout with supervision who saw what others couldn't, or a downright seer, or like Sandberg's mom. If you were anyone else, though, it was hard to imagine the third-year Chicago second baseman breaking out of the mold of hitting 260-270 with maybe double-digit power, but good speed that he had established with more than two years in the major leagues. He was already 24, after all, not really a prospect anymore, and he toiled for the 71-91 Cubs in 1983, never anybody's pick to do anything in the old National League East not with the Montreal Expos and the St. Louis Cardinals hanging around. Thank goodness for the lowly New York Mets. But then the 1984 season began, and baseball surprised us. The San Diego Padres were good. The Detroit Tigers were out of this world. And the National League East was just going to be tight between the Chicago Cubs and the New York Mets. Weird, but magical. In the end, of course, the Tigers fulfilled their destiny, dispatching the Padres in a ho-hum five-game World Series. But a whole new bevy of stars emerged, more and more surprising to most of us than Ryan Sandberg. Okay, maybe Barbaro Garby was more surprising, but that didn't last. And Don Mattingly, but stop nitpicking. All Sandberg did that summer was pace the Cubbies' offense with a very balanced batting line that included a 314 batting average, 19 home runs, 19 triples, 84 RBI, 32 stolen bases, and an even 200 hits. Do that with a turnaround Cinderella team and you'll get noticed. And so Rhino did, nabbing his first all-star berth, his second gold glove at second, and the National League MVP award. That recognition extended to Sandberg's baseball cards, too. I mean, if you take a look at his master set listing over on the PSA website, you'll see 11 Sandberg cards in 1984. In 1985, the year after his breakout, nearly 40 different cards. Part of that is due to the general continued growth of the hobby during those years, but most of that rests squarely on Sandberg's own performance and his growing celebrity with the Cubs. You can really see that play out when you consider some of the exclusive cardboard company the budding Chicago legend began keeping in 1985. Case in point, the 1985 Kitty Clover Potato Chip set, issued by, surprise, Kitty Clover Potato Chips. These were sort of a souped-up version of the MSA discs from the late 1970s with a bit more color, yellow and red, and stats on the card backs. And though Kitty Clover has firm Midwest roots, their discs covered the game's big stars from coast to coast, Dave Winfield to Goose Gossage, and everywhere in between, Mike Schmidt, Alan Trammell. But guess which youngster crashed the party, checking in at disc number 11? Yep, Ryan Sandberg, a newly minted cardboard god, just taking his first steps towards Cooperstown. It was a turn of events no one this side of Dallas Green could have seen coming. Like our video? Then like our video and subscribe to our channel. WaxPackGods.com